Hi, I'm Chris Bailey. I'm a Blender YouTuber over at C Bailey Film, and today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're gonna be making melting text. Let's get started. Now, if you're brand new to Blender, why don't you check out the free Blender Basics course at cgcookie.com. Links are in the description below. Go check it out. So to get started, let's go ahead and make some text in our scene. So I'm just gonna delete everything by hitting A and X to delete everything, and then Shift A and text. We're gonna create a text object. Now, I'm going to set this up. I'm gonna hit Tab to go into edit mode, and I will backspace to delete the text. That's so you can change you know, what the text says by going into edit mode. And I'm gonna type melt. We need a better font. I want like a really chunky, large font. So we've got a lot of you know geometry to work with for this. So I'm gonna go to my tab down here, the text tab, and I'm gonna find the font section. And I'm just gonna open up this folder here where it says regular. So automatically take me to my system uh, fonts folder. And I can just pick a nice big chunky font. And I'm gonna go for this one here, area black, but you can pick anything you want, just something nice and big and it'll be good. All right. so. Now I'm gonna to come to the geometry tab and I'm gonna go down to extrude and I'll just pull that up a bit so it's nice and fat. And then I'm gonna rotate X 90. This will set it on the ground. And then I wanna scale it up. So this is pretty small. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna scale this up. Let's see, I'll get the actual numbers for you. Um, scale it up by five. And I'll just center it up in my uh, my scene here. Great, okay, now what I'm gonna do next is go Shift A Mesh Plane and I'm gonna just scale this up. This is gonna be a little ground plane for us. And I'm gonna take my text and just grab it up. In fact, I'll look at this, I'll hit one on my Never Keypad and I'll hit Grab and Z, so G and Z, and just bring it up a little bit so that the text is all floating above the ground. I just wanna make sure it's not intersecting. It's okay if it's off the ground a little bit because it'll kind of settle onto it once we run this simulation. So what we're gonna to do to make the text actually melt is we're gonna turn it into a fluid simulation. So next thing we need to make is a domain. Now, if you're not familiar with how fluid simulations work, you need to create several objects. You need to create an object that represents either where the fluid is gonna flow into your scene from, or perhaps an object that is the fluid itself. In our case, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna make this text actually a, you know, a fluid object. And then you need a domain, which is the, the space that the fluid will move in. So this new domain needs to encompass all the area where this fluid's gonna go. And this is sort of like helps Blender know, what do I need to calculate? Oh, just focus on this area. That's all I need to think about. So um, it's just how fluids work. And then um, another component is uh, collisions. So anything that can interact with the fluid or the fluid can like bump into and flow around. So we're gonna make this floor a collision object. Uh, but you could put other things in your scene as well and make those collision objects and the fluid will react around those. So let's go ahead and get those things set up. I'm gonna go Shift A Mesh Cube, and we're just gonna use a simple cube for our domain. Now we don't need it to be any higher than our text because the fluid's not gonna go up into the sky. So we can keep the domain you know, pretty much right on level with the top of the text. I'm gonna scale X and I will scale Y as well. And uh, I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'll hit three to go to face selection mode, grab this bottom face and I'll just bring it up just so it's just a little bit underneath the plane. Um, and let's see, the rest of this is pretty good. I'm going to hit S to scale and Shift Z. So this will turn off scaling on the Z uh, direction. It'll just scale on the X and the Y, just to expand it out. And the reason why I'm going so far out is I just wanna make sure I've got plenty of room for this text to pool. I don't really want it to hit the sides. I kind of want it to like, pool and, and kind of reach sort of an, an end to itself. So we need to turn on all this stuff. Uh, we need to turn on fluid dynamics for all these objects next. So let's go ahead and name these. I'm gonna call this the big cube, my domain, and uh, the plane I'll call my floor, and the text will just leave as text. Now let's go ahead and convert this text to mesh. So I'm gonna hit F3 and type convert. And just that first option there, convert mesh, and click that. And now this text object is a mesh object. So if I hit tab, you can see I can't change the text like it's a word processor anymore. Now it's actually just mesh, so. Okay, go out of transparent mode. And let's select the domain first, and let's come down to the uh, physics tab, which is that circle with the little 
line around it. And we're going to turn on fluids. Okay. And we're going to change the type from none to domain. You can see it goes transparent and showing us some stuff. We've got this little box in the corner, which shows us the voxel size, which is the, the size of each sort of fluid 3d pixel that it's going to calculate. Then we're going to take the mesh here. We'll click uh, the fluid and we'll uh, go to type. And this one is going to be our flow because this is the thing that's going to be bringing the fluid into the scene. And we'll select the floor, click fluid, type. We'll switch this to effector. Okay, so with this floor, we're going to have this be a collision. Uh, so it's already set up for this. But we do want to tick is planar. And you want to click that whenever the object that the fluid's supposed to collide with is just a single polygon. So this plane is just a single polygon. So it's not like a box, which is an enclosed piece of mesh. Um, so whenever it's just a flat, whatever, or just one polygon, even if it's not flat, but it's just doesn't have any depth to it, you wanna click is planar and that will just help Blender know how to calculate um, the collision. Okay, so we can leave that one alone now. We can come over to our text and we wanna change the flow type from smoke, which is the default, to liquid. And you want to make sure the flow behavior is set to geometry, which is the default, so it will be. But just so you understand it, inflow is like, that's the one where it's like a pipe, you know, that like the fluid is going to flow continuously out of the object. Outflow is uh, like a drain, like a, it would suck the fluid and make the fluid go away from the scene. And geometry means just take the geometry that this fluid is applied to and treat it as if it's all just one fluid. So it's not flowing continually. It's just sort of solid state fluid and we want something to happen. So you could do like a sphere, use geometry, hit run the sim and it's gonna be like a ball of fluid that just falls to the ground and splashes. So that's how you have a little more control uh, over all the different types. So, okay, now uh, we're gonna leave all that. Let's click on the domain now and we're gonna change the domain type from gas to liquid. So now it's gonna calculate for a liquid. And we need to change a couple of settings. Now with simulations like fluid sims and gas and you know smoke and fire, it's it can be a very slow, tedious process because you have to change little values one at a time, run a sim and see how it looks. So I'm gonna show you kind of how to get going with that yourself so you can experiment with these settings and actually figure out what's going on. So a couple of tips I like to think about. One is let's go ahead and go down to cache. The best way is to to preview your, your um, sim is to cache it first. That way you're gonna get a really consistent result and it helps you judge accurately what's happening. Sometimes if you don't cache the result and you're just kind of scrubbing, Blender's gonna try and calculate, but you might be skipping frames as you scrub and it might be a really heavy sim, so it might freeze and lag and it's gonna in introduce a lot of artifacts into your simulation. It may not even like use the values accurately and it's just a big mess. So. You're never really going to get a sense of what's actually happening unless you're running a cache. So caching just basically means it's going to run the simulation and save it to disk. I like to change the type from replay to all. Um, that gives us this bake all button. And this is just like it saves it out as a separate file. You see here, this is where it's going to go. Um, you can put this in your project directory if you want, or you can put it anywhere really. And we've got the frame in and frame frame start and frame in for the simulation, how long you want it to last for. So when you're starting out, you kind of want to just get your base settings right. You want to figure out how does this thing need to look when it's done. So in our case, we want this fluid to look like the text when it starts. We want it to look like that text that we've just made and not really have much variation. So in order to figure that out, we're going to have to turn a lot of our values way up high. So let's not worry about the sim just yet. Let's just worry about getting sort of the initial state right. So to do that, I'm gonna come over here and set my frame in to one. So I'm just gonna worry about baking one frame at a time. Then um, I'm gonna right click bake all and I'm gonna add it to quick favorites. Now quick favorites is a great little menu. If you hit Q in your 3D viewport, you get a list of all the things you've added. You can see I've added lock camera to view, lock to cursor, bake all and free all. And bake all and free all I've just grabbed from here. So you just right click, you can add it to quick favorites. To get the free all, you just have to hit bake. So I'll just hit bake here real quick and it'll run a quick simulation. And you can see it changes to free all. And free all basically deletes the bake. So when you've got that, you can right click and add it to quick favorites as well. And now we can do it from our viewport. Okay, so we're getting set up. Things are looking good. Let's come over to, we have to turn on a few more things. I'm just going to close all these up to start with so we just have less to look at. All right, let's go to liquid and we're going to leave the simulation method to flip. We can leave the default for a lot of these. 
we want to turn on viscosity and diffusion. So if you're curious what any of these do, you can just hover over them and you get this little pop-up. So viscosity, enable fluid viscosity settings. Not really helpful if you don't know what viscosity is, but viscosity is basically the, how much the liquid maintains its shape. So think about like honey versus water, right? So, or molasses, you know, where you pour it and it's really thick and it does these like, you know, big thick drips. Whereas water, you pour it, it's gonna flow and just splash right out, right away. So it moves very quickly. So viscosity is kind of like holds its shape, moves slow. That's the way to think about it. So um, we're gonna use viscosity to get the text to hold its shape. So we're gonna go ahead and set this. I'm gonna turn this up to 0.1 um, to begin with. Now I've done some experimenting beforehand to kind of get these numbers, um, but I'll show you how I, the process I use to get to these numbers so you can do this kind of thing too. Uh, diffusion, um, I've turned this one on because if you hover over it, it says enable fluid diffusion, e.g. viscosity, surface tension. This just gives us a bit of extra control, um, but I, I don't know if we really need it or not. I've just turned it on and it seemed to work well, so I've kept it on, but you know, you could experiment with turning this off. That's what I mean with fluid sims. You really don't know like half of what's going on. You just kind of have to guess and poke at the numbers. All right, so we'll leave those and uh, we can leave particle alone and mesh. We're gonna go ahead and turn on mesh and this is going to turn our domain into the mesh. So that's an important thing to know about with a fluid sim is that the domain object is the object that's going to become the mesh of your fluid. So that's the one you wanna put the material on and all that stuff. But you'll see that once we run. At first it won't, we won't see anything. It'll just be this big, big cube. Uh, so we can leave all this alone, up res and particle radius. I'll just leave those, that's all fine. And uh, I think that's all we need to worry about. Now, the main thing we're gonna be playing with is up here, the resolution divisions and under liquid, the viscosity strength. So those are the two things that we really need to mess with. So, all right, so I'm gonna hit uh, Q and bake all and it will bake. And you can see we've got some, some stuff that's happened. So our domain has become these two blob things. I turn off my visibility of my text. You can see we've got a long way to go to make this fluid look like the text, right? So this is pretty much just because the domain uh, is using a voxel size that's so big. So you can see it just generates these big blocks and we need a much finer, much smaller resolution for this to actually begin to look like we want it to. So let's go to settings, hit Q and free all that will free up all of our controls again from the bake. And we're gonna increase our resolution divisions. And what I do is I tend to double this. So I'll, I'll do 64 is next, and then I'll bake. See, so it takes us a little bit longer. We get a little bit more detail. Um, that's not quite right, so free all. Let's double it again. Uh, 128, bake all. So now it's taking a lot longer. All right, so we're starting to see some definition in our text. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and shade smooth. And, uh, but you could tell we need to go a bit higher. So let's free all again and let's double this 256. Now, if you've got a slower computer, this is the point where you're starting to sweat because <laughs> it's gonna take some time. Here we go. Bake, let's see how long it takes. I've got a timer. Okay, so that took 33 seconds on my computer and I have got a beefy machine, let me tell you. So it's gonna take some time. I uh, hope you're uh, prepared for that. So anyways, you can see we got a whole lot closer to a really good result. It's still not quite enough. Like I think I would even go up a little bit higher than this. Um, and I think I will actually, I'll push it a little bit harder until I've got something that looks just right. Um, so this is the key. You kind of keep going back and forth with this until you get enough resolution that it looks like you want it to. So I'm gonna free all. And let's see, I might send this to 300. I won't double it because that's just gonna be, that's just gonna be nuts. All right, there we go. So that took a full minute now. Um, and okay, so now that I know how many resolutions, divisions I need to go to get to where I want it to look, I can back it off and start working on the simulation. So I'm gonna drop this right down to, uh, I don't know, 128. So something that's lightweight and easier for my machine to manage. And then what I'm gonna do is start playing with my settings. So I'll just make sure that one works. So I'll just go bake all, and just make sure it doesn't take too long. Yeah, that's fine. So you can see it, it's really hard to see, but it, it's gonna give us the flexibility now to play with the simulation. So I'll just free all again, and let's come down here. I'm gonna to go to my viscosity, and I'm actually gonna keyframe it. So I'm going to, I'll give it a few frames, 
maybe five, 10 frames where it's just gonna be normal. And then I'll hit I to set a keyframe. And then I'll go forward maybe 10 frames and I'll set this viscosity to zero and I'll click here to set another keyframe. So I've got two keyframes, the viscosity is going off to zero. And then I'll give it some time to pool. There we go, so that's working nicely. I can see that the I can see that the melt's going to be good. It's probably a little too fast, so I might grab this keyframe and drag it out. So it's going to be a bit slower, and I'll run my sim to frame 40 because I feel like it's not taking too long, and it'd be good to have those extra frames to look at. So I'll free all and bake. Okay, so I finally found a setting that I liked. Um, I ended up going with. Uh, let me show you. Uh, so I have my, just spread my keyframes out. I put my second one at frame 30 and I set the strength to 0 0.00001, almost zero, but just enough to kind of slow it down a little bit. So I still think it's going to pull quite a bit when I get to here, but I just like this slower melt at the beginning. I think that looks quite, quite nice. Now, next thing to do is to figure out, all right, let's get the material to look right and get like some of the scene set up, get everything lit and ready to go. And then we can run the final sim and then do the final render. So well, I'm going to come back up here uh, to my, my divisions here, my, um, my resolution divisions, and I'll crank it back up to 300. And I'm going to change my cache back just to doing one frame. And I'm going to bake all. I've got my high res version set up here, ready for me to look at. And uh, let's go and get a material going. So um, one thing to think about is I could see that my simulation is kind of not quite on my ground plane. It's kind of off a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make another ground plane. So I'm gonna go shift A mesh plane. And I'll scale this up and I'll grab this one up until it intersects my fluid just a little bit. And because this one's not set as a fluid, it's not gonna interact with my simulation at all. So just a way to get a slightly tighter um, connection point between the fluid and the ground. All right, now let's set up a camera. So I'm gonna shift A camera and I'll jump into my camera view and let's go over here and lock our camera to view. I'm gonna click my camera, go to the camera tab, come down to viewport display and I'm gonna turn up Passport 2 to darken the outsides. And then I'm going to come back to my view and untick lock camera to view. And now I can just scale this up a little bit. I'm gonna switch this to Eevee. Come over here and turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. I'm gonna go shift A, light sunlight, and I'll just add a sunlight in, bring it around a little bit like this. Shift E to duplicate, go to the other side, and just come around maybe to the edge I'll take our, my first sun and I'll just turn the brightness up quite a bit there and maybe give it a slightly cool color and then come to my other one and give it a slightly warm color and turn it up a bit. Now with my text selected, um, I'm just going to split my view and just zoom in a little bit and get rid of all my controls here. Let's turn all this stuff off and I'll switch this view over to the shader editor and I will click new to create a new material. And I'll come over here and we're gonna be pretty basic material. We're gonna give it some subsurface, which is uh, means that the light can pass into the object, pass through it. Um, I might give it maybe a bit of a, should we go full butter? Like we could give it a bit of a warm color and same with the subsurface. We can give that a slightly warm color as well. That looks guys. Turn up my specular, I might turn the roughness down, make it look kind of wet. And I'll click my ground plane and come to my material tab, click new. And I might just make, let's see, we darken this material up, maybe give it a bit of roughness so that we've got this nice reflection. We could also add an HDRI. I might just have a look at what it looks like if I turn off scene world. This will give me one of the built-in HDRIs. Um, my blender won't render with this, but it does give me a nice sense of what it could look like. And, uh, I can then use that to go hunt down an HDRI. Okay, so I'm all ready to hit run on my sim. So fingers crossed, it turns out looking cool. I'm gonna run the sim, I'll run the render, and we can take a look at it. Well, there you have it. I hope you're really excited with the result. I know I am, it looks really cool. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. If you liked it, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to find out when we drop new tutorials. Leave us a comment about what kind of tutorials you'd like to see in the future and uh, don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. We got a lot of great stuff over there for you. Thanks for watching this. Hope you learned a lot. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, see you later.